Michelle O'Brien is a seasoned media professional. For 27 years, she has been producing and hosting Emmy and nationally award-winning local television, as well as winning six Goldie Awards for radio in Alaska. Currently, she is general manager of Alaska Broadcast Communications with three radio stations in Ketchikan, Alaska. I had the pleasure to work with Michelle in 2018 at the Zones 24 and 32 Montreal Conference, where she was general chair. Three things people might not know about Michelle. Michelle has a college degree in political science with an emphasis on foreign policy, specializing in Russian Soviet studies. Just like the Private Benjamin movie, Michelle joined the US Army, showed up with four suitcases after college, like seriously, Susie's sorority girl joins basic training. They laughed at her, which pissed her off. They took her suitcases and poured them all over the ground and made her in charge of the folks they thought would fail. As a college graduate, you get immediate rank. Because she was so determined, she ended up winning Soldier of the Post at Fort Jackson because she didn't like people telling her she can't do or accomplish something. Michelle and family were stationed in various places while in the Army. Her eldest daughter, who ultimately went on to youth exchange in Brazil, was born in Panama. Her youngest daughter was born in Arizona and went on youth exchange in Ecuador. A Rotarian since 1998, Michelle is our Rotary Public Image Coordinator for Alaska and Western Canada, and she is here to speak to us about how we are marketing in a post-COVID-19 world. Please welcome Michelle O'Brien. What I was hoping to touch upon today is perhaps at least give you something to take away as an aha moment, maybe an interesting idea or something maybe that you hadn't thought of. And uh, so with that being said, uh, let's think about the situation that we're in right now. And I think Canada and Alaska are uniquely paired together, A, because I'm essentially right up the proverbial road from you, um, but we share a lot of things in common. Uh, for example, fishing and definitely the cruise industry now, as well as borders and everything else. And so let's talk about what has been happening uh, first, COVID-19 and the difficulties that those presented. And now, and I would say this is more US centric, but uh, certainly uh, the race riots that are happening and further disrupting not only our society, but our culture and our economy, definitely in the United States. So what does that mean to Rotary? I think it means something really important. Um, and so I'd like to start that discussion right now. So this, these, all of these events, they have absolutely caused a huge, massive shift in thinking. You know, I read a lot of articles as I'm preparing for my morning show and my noontime show on the radio, and a lot of people are thinking about things that they never, ever thought about before. They're reflecting back on things that maybe they wish they did in life, things that they, maybe they'd like to do in life. They're dealing with an entirely new reality. And in many cases, and I'm not sure what's happening in Canada right now, but a lot of people, um, I personally did have to quarantine uh, for 14 days because one of my DJs tested positive and his desk was right next to mine. But you're dealing with a sense of solitude, right? I think that Rotary has a really unique and amazing opportunity right now from a public image standpoint to capitalize upon this shift in thinking uh, that people are having right now. And that's kind of what I want to share tonight. So what are they looking for? And if you, I'm not going to read this because I'm not, I don't like to read PowerPoints, but we need to keep this in mind. All of these thoughts that people are having, when I do a radio commercial or maybe I was producing a television show and I've been in advertising forever, What's the message that people are looking for? So think about maybe a commercial that you saw on television or something that you heard, or maybe you saw it online and it kind of gave you pause and made you think. Even if it necessarily wasn't about that product, it made you think about a topic, but you remembered that particular product or organization. And so think about this as we move forward, not in our clubs, but also in our districts, and I think and as an organization as a whole, what are we doing right now that's going to define us moving forward? Because I, I truly, truly believe 
that what we did before over the many, many decades of Rotary is not pertinent to what we need to do now to resonate with folks. So thinking about that, and again, going back to the, I guess the voluminous amount of reading that I do, I, I believe, and this is a, a place where I'd love to hear, just kind of have a pause, Alan, if you don't mind, I'd love to hear some discussion and see if you guys agree with these three things that I came up with. I think the people out there, regardless of age group, they're looking for a sense of purpose. They're looking for something to get behind, all right? So they've, they've lost everything. Uh, or lost a lot of stuff. A lot of people have lost jobs. They've lost all sorts of different things. They're looking for something to rally behind. And you know what? Because they've been alone, they're looking for that friendship and fellowship. Does anyone care to share their thoughts on that? Oh, you guys are a rough crowd. I think that um, one of the things that I've noticed, I mean, I've noticed that for sure. Um, there is a lot of neighborhoods that are starting to connect with um, with each other, like um, neighbors doing group things. Um, there's a lot of uh, Facebook groups that are trying to uh, find out how they can help people that need help. Um, and so, you know, I think that um, a lot of the things that, that we're doing as Rotary and a lot of the things that Rotor actors are doing um, fit really well into that wheelhouse. And and you know it's a really captive audience out there right now i think so too and you know i think that based on whether it be self-imposed or or mandatory solitude uh either cooped up with family members or in many cases by themselves you know i think a lot of people have had to rethink their notion of um what constitutes a real value in their life if I may uh, also add that, um, as Carl has mentioned to people about a uh, sense of purpose, this is reflected in the actions that the district took and assistant governors and presidents and clubs when we went through the COVID-19 grants to uh, each area. And I think that uh, presidents and AGs are biting at the bit to do something, looking for some way they can help alleviate pain or create uh, positive situations, whether it's providing medical supplies or, uh, or food, the food bank. And they really thought that was a great purpose. They, they believed it would happen. And what happened is they, even though it was from a distance, they did have fellowship. I think that's a, a prime example of that in collecting all of those three points together. So do you think that not only um, does something like that not only inspire retention with membership, but also inspires new members. Uh, I know there's, uh, when I was on a zone call, uh, one of the districts back east, uh, they, I think they reported that they got something like 50 new members like last month, like only doing Zoom meetings. Well, I think that's actually the whole, the whole reason that people will uh, join Rotary as done by several surveys. Uh, a sense of purpose and the fellowship actually making an impact on at this point in their local communities for the most part. But this is what the, I've said to a lot of clubs, it's about impact, not get membership to grow members, but what's the impact? And if people see the impact you have on a local community, then they'll say, hey, I want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Uh, and I would encourage you, and I've, I've said this before to this group, but I please, please, please share this because this group has exploded, is please get your folks to join the Get the Word Out Now group on Facebook. Um, it's up to, I think, in excess of 2,000 members right now. But that's just one group for public image, and I'm the person that approves everyone. There's just a quick three-question survey. What district are you from? You know, what are you interested in? And are you a Rotarian? Uh, but there's other groups, like the one I have on the screen right now. Um, and that's not to say that 
that you can't do a group. But people are so anxious to connect with anything right now that this is our opportunity to share a really inspiring message that we haven't done before. And the People of Action campaign is phenomenal. And it's a great basis point for sharing stuff. But I think there's also some other really, really creative ways to do that as well. Hey, Michelle, I'd like to add to what you've said. Um, I gave it a little thought first before I jumped in. Um, as to purpose, um, one of my favorite authors is John O'Donohue. He's passed, but in one of his books, Eternal Echoes, um, the book is the gist of the book is about our need to belong. And um, when we have both personal interest and common interests, in case Rotary Club is uh, the common interest of doing things for the greater good uh, and the activities associated there too, um, I think that outlines our purpose. We don't lose sight of that. Uh, but having a great number of interests also takes away from that um, feeling of isolation. And there's quite a difference between being lonely and uh, spending time in solitude, uh, but some people can't discern the difference, especially in, in uh, unprecedented times such as what we're living in now. Um, and I think most everybody here would be agree that they're part of Rotary to make an inspired difference. Uh, and that speaks to the fellowship uh, that we enjoy with one another and uh, our beliefs as Rotarians. So I think you're, you're, uh, you're hitting the nail on the head there with your points. Well, and, and you know, I, I, I personally, you know, just self-reflecting this is aside from, you know, from our discussion, I guess, to a certain degree, but, you know, I would always relish, you know, being able to come home and just be by myself uh, before, because I was busy, you know, doing all of these various things that I'm on and catch can and work and rotary and this and that and that. And so sometimes I just relish coming home, but when it was forced upon me, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I need to get out. I need to go do things and see people. And, you know, whereas before it was just fine to, you know, engage people on social media or watch a video or something like that, that suddenly became not fine. Um, because I wanted to, I, I found myself gravitating towards various platforms where I would learn something. Uh, I would, you know, perhaps watch a YouTube video, which showed me how to do something perhaps around my house or something like that. I was gravitating towards different mediums than before because I was just kind of craving that. I don't want to be alone anymore. But anyway, my, I, have a, I have a little black bug and he keeps me very busy, but he wasn't cutting the bait on the 14 day quarantine. So onward. Um, so when we move forward, um, and this goes back to the people of action campaign, please do not follow the God-given recipe that they have given us for the Rotary People of Action campaign. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, and if you have nothing else uh, to use, then by all means, plug those in. You can do that right there um, on, on the Brand Central. I mean, it's very easy, it's plug and play. You just drop in the photo, it's all right there for you. But you could also do something really creative like these folks did. And it conveys a message. It obviously shows that they're doing something. It shows that they're protecting themselves and you know, respecting other people around their town. And obviously the branding is correct. So think about that and show what Rotary does. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a service project either. It could be social, it could be, it could be anything, but show the value. So then back to what I was saying before, and I just plugged in some images literally that I lifted off today because uh, I wanted to, them to be really, really current. But you know, things that are happening right now that are really resonating with people, when we connect on that personal level, and this goes back to the image that I just showed, I'm not saying you have to use images like these that are so strong. These are all news story images. Uh, maybe the one on the bottom is really is really great. Uh, but when you're getting that message out, ask these questions. Are you answering these questions for the people that are looking at our imaging? 
And whether or not it is an audio type of uh, message or a visual message, print, no matter what you do, please answer these questions. Because when you connect on that personal level, you're really going to reach their heart. And I think that it's that's where the opportunity lies with Rotary because we have so much to offer to connect with people. Um, the best example that I can give, um, and I, I know there's Canadians here, um, but think about this Super Bowl, the American Super Bowl. Um, every year, a lot of people watch the Super Bowl because they only wanna watch the commercials because the commercials are so amazing and so heart-wrenching and they have such amazing messages that you always walk, I always walk away at least watching the Super Bowl and with like, oh my gosh, that Budweiser commercial was amazing. That blah, blah, blah commercial was amazing. And there's funny ones, but there's also the ones that really resonate with me are the ones that really speak to a cause. So think about that during your messaging. And here, here's a gr another great example. And this is actually out of a Rotary Club. Um, so they donated these masks and it's a very simple image and this would be a very appropriate social media post. And I mean, I think, I think that that's very pertinent in today's day and times. So we're talking about resonating, but I think there's some new ways to get our message out. And uh, back to what I was talking about being creative. Anyone who's heard me speak before knows that I've long, long been a, a huge Facebook disciple. Uh, I've always touted the strength of Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter to a certain degree. It just depends on where you're at, uh, as well as traditional media. I mean, I, I work in traditional media. But for a really long time, there's one social media that I have actually shunned, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say I've almost publicly shamed them, and now I kind of feel bad about it because suddenly it's huge in our, in our world, and I think that we should be exploring this a little bit more, um, and that one would be LinkedIn. Um, I used to tell people when I, uh, when I taught social media at PETS, and various other places, uh, zone conferences, whatever, uh, even with other organizations. You know, if you're not looking for a job or you're not hiring someone, LinkedIn isn't the place for you. Well, that's patently wrong right now. Um, people are using LinkedIn. First off, they're, they're there right now because, quite frankly, at least in the United States, you know, 30 million people plus are looking for jobs. And an equivalent number of people are looking for great people to hire. But it has become a hub for people to not only learn, but to gain valuable training, to read up on great articles. And the conversion rate, uh, after I looked into it a little bit more, the conversion rate for people to actually click on a website that they consider trustworthy, which by the way, if they were on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or anywhere else, they would not consider that website trustworthy. 56% of people will click on a website, i.e. rotary.org or Club Finder, um, when they see it on LinkedIn as opposed to anywhere else. So the clubs and the districts in particular, it would be much more valuable for districts, but to have a good LinkedIn profile using action words and I'll, I'll, I'll take you to a couple of LinkedIn profiles a little bit later uh, to show you some examples. Uh, and then, you know, put out those press releases, those stuff that you would normally share with your newspapers or anywhere else online. Go ahead and throw that article up on, on LinkedIn and you'll be very, very surprised who responds to that. And furthermore, because a lot of people are looking for that networking opportunity right now, I think that we're going to be very, very surprised to see how many people reach out to us uh, via LinkedIn as opposed to other places. You know, we're having a Rotary Duck Race on the 4th of July here in Ketchikan, right? And so that's the perfect venue is, is like, let's have an event on Facebook. Let's, uh, do, uh, let's do something on Instagram and some other stuff like that. 
but that's not what the LinkedIn people are going to find valuable. The LinkedIn people are going to find something really valuable when it talks about uh, a very successful food project within a neighborhood or something that Rotary did, you know, the In Polio Now campaign would be a great example. Something along those lines, or even a professional profile of someone within the district. So uh, Dr. Smith, renowned neurosurgeon in Chilliwack, traveled to Africa in the last six months and did blah, blah, blah. So hopefully you can see where I'm going with that. So, so think about LinkedIn. Uh, explore it. Uh, it's definitely not, in my opinion, um, it's a little more difficult to learn. It really is. Uh, I, I, but just practice with it and I think you'll be very surprised. All right, so here's the next one. Uh, I have a young employee at my radio station who I'm trying to mentor and grow. And in fact, he's my youngest daughter's age. And he, <laughs> He's all about TikTok. All these kids are all about TikTok. In fact, uh, it's not all about kids anymore. Uh, I did a story on a set of grandparents that joined TikTok, I think it was two or three weeks ago, and they're, they've, they now have millions of views because their granddaughter, their granddaughter has challenged them with various uh, songs. And so they get on TikTok and it's like a 15 or you know, 15, 20 second video that you do on TikTok using your phone only. And they make these TikTok videos of them dancing to these songs and they have become the grandparents of TikTok and they're wildly popular. So TikTok is something that, you know, your members uh, can, you know, it's, you just download the app on your phone there's no editing. You just make a quick video, you know, less than a commercial. You know, if you're having an event, if you're doing something really cool, it should be fun. It should be spontaneous uh, and just post it. And you just don't know what people are going to love. But there's, in my humble opinion, uh, with TikTok, there's that coolness factor. There's that coolness factor that really resonates with younger people. So if you're looking to add a, young, a younger demographic, uh, to your membership or appeal to a young, younger demographic, then I would definitely add that. And uh, if you don't think your youth exchange students or your interactors or road directors or other youth leaders aren't on TikTok, you're sadly mistaken. Uh, it's the biggest downloaded app right now, uh, period. And it's fun. I've got a TikTok. Um, it's, it's really fun. But Facebook is still the king. Uh, the problem with Facebook, uh, and, and many clubs over the years and districts have found this out, is that it is high maintenance. You, you can't, no one person can do it alone. Uh, because normally people have their own Facebook pages, uh, or they, they might be involved in other nonprofit organizations. So, I mean, I think I manage like 10 different Facebook pages right now, in addition to my own personal account, and it can become kind of a time suck, right? And uh, so you got to get some help. You got to get some help. In addition, I would consider having an annual marketing budget for this. Uh, the nice thing about it is that they have now uh, added all sorts of bells and whistles. Uh, recently, they rolled out Facebook Marketplace. So, you know, if your club is selling t-shirts or something like that, even for our duck race, you can sell that stuff right on there. You've got a donation button. You've got all sorts of neat tools on Facebook, uh, but it needs to be regularly updated. Uh, that's the biggest thing. We've gone through and audited a bunch of clubs and districts. And, uh, you know, it's like, why, why do you even have Facebook if, you know, the last post you did was in October of 2016 and you're using the rotary theme from four years ago? It's just, don't do that. Okay, so I was going to share with you um, something that we did, and I actually just got a really cool email from uh, the Rotary Media team in Evanston today that they're looking at doing a story on rotary.org about the uh, Ketchikan High School Rotary Interact Club. And so what we did, um, one of my DJs has a band, it's an 80s music band, 
and they started doing these germ-free live online concerts on Facebook. And so they set up a virtual tip jar. And so what we did uh, when they canceled the prom for the kids, the senior prom, and uh, we said, well, let's do a virtual prom. And so our radio station sponsored it. And uh, they, uh, I might want to, yeah, let me, let me see if it'll pull up. But uh, anyway, so we did this uh, in the K High Rotary Interact Club sponsored it. And so it was huge for them. Right, hold on one second. Um, let's see how I can minimize this. See if this pulls up, Alan. All right, there we go. I'm, I'm going to. All right, so this was just the, um, hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, this was uh, the event. And as you can see over here, there were 8,780 people that were reached, um, 6,200 views. And bear in mind that our town only has 14,000 people and 500, 5,738 engagements and 92 shares. So it was crazy popular. And uh, there was some nice imaging at the end there or beginning there rather for them. And then they did this great concert. Rotary Interact, which is right on the screen, right there. Nice. You can see it. Very and then the other one is on the other. KPU's on this screen. There you so. go. On the other side. There. Very nice. Over here. Thank you, guys. So thanks again for everybody helping make this possible. And, of course, KFMJ. So that, that was that. Um, and it was, it was a huge, huge success. And so if you can think out of the box like that, if you know of – it, it could be a local anything uh, if you're still, you know, having to social distance or do something like that. Um, that's just one idea that I, I that I might propose. You can do a number of different things, actually. The other thing that we did, uh, which was hugely popular, and you can you can check it out uh, on uh, on our Facebook pages there. Um, but again, being silly, uh, who would expect a Rotary Club? And, and we're rolling back the time frame here, guys, to when it was under quarantine. Uh, but I decided, just out of the blue, uh, my, uh, my oldest daughter's na middle name, rather, is Caroline. And so one of my favorite songs in the entire world is Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline. And that happens to be one of the most requested karaoke songs. Uh, I don't karaoke because I'm a terrible singer. But anyway, so I decided every night at 7 o'clock, literally every single night at seven o'clock when catch can was on a hunker down status we would play sweet caroline by neil diamond and people were gathering they had drawn chalk on their driveways to social distance and they were taking tiktok videos of themselves the alaska airlines employees took videos of themselves on tiktok they were taking facebook videos of themselves singing along to this song and they were thrilled about it. So imagine if you could come up with a silly idea like that, which costs nothing. Uh, I, if the Rotary Club would have come to me and said, hey, we'd like to sponsor that, I would have given that to them for free. So think about something that's out of the box. So let's go back to Zoom. Uh, can we take a quick poll, Alan? How, how many people here? are Zoom fatigued. Just uh, write a quick response in the chat. And what's, what's the average number of Zoom meetings that you do per week? So I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you tell me. So when Zoom, uh, when all this lockdown stuff happened with COVID, uh, Zoom daily meetings worldwide went from 3 million to in excess of 30 million and then into the hundreds of millions of meetings 
per day globally. That's crazy. I know that I, if I have four Zoom meetings in a day, I'm, I'm dying. It's, it's terrible. Unless it's exciting. So we're starting to get some responses in. Uh, oh, go ahead. You know, Tell me. I guess, I guess, you know, everybody can see them because they're, they're um, chatted to everyone. But um, Bill Butler is uh, hanging in there two or three a week. Um, Walter is not tired of it yet. <laughs> me, I'm doing about 20 a week. So I'm, I'm getting on the fatigue <laughs> side. Um, Roy Holman, three to four per week. Um, John, <clears throat> three, but it is, but it isn't comfortable. <laughs> Brad, Brad Whitaker, district governor, um, ten meetings, but not zoomed out yet. Carol, district governor elect, not fatigued, but it's a bunch. I'm online meetings with Zoom, uh, go to meeting, Microsoft Teams, at least five hours a day. That's you know, it's uh, it takes a lot of energy. Michelle and I were talking about that earlier. Um, it takes a lot more energy, I find, to do Zoom meetings than it does to do an in-person meeting. And because we um, aren't, you know, driving to the meeting with that time ahead and the time after, we seem to be scheduling, or at least I do, scheduling Zoom meetings back to back. And it's, it's you know, it's getting a lot. Anyway, back <laughs> to you, Michelle. Which is why, <laughs> which is why many reasons I don't turn my video on. I'm like tearing my hair out. But, you know, it, the interesting, um, Jeffrey Cataret told me, he said, you know, the interesting conversation I had with Holger Nack is he said that he will be the least, most likely, be the least traveled Rotary International President in history, but he will probably talk to more Rotarians during his year than any other president in history. So think about that. It's, it's, it's worth it. The other thing that we've discovered as we were talking as coordinators and just in general talking like in that get the word out now Rotary group is that people are really, really enjoying this notion. And we, we do have a list, which I can email out to everyone. Um, but go visit other Rotary clubs on their Zoom meetings. It's absolutely fascinating. You can go to... Um, the Zoom meeting, the club meeting in Nigeria, you can go, um, shoot, I was doing something and there was a guy from Honduras that came. I was a speaker at a club in Georgia. Go around. That's what makes Rotary Global. And I think that is also an advantage to our benefit right now because so many Rotarians, they get locked down in this notion that I'm a member of the Rotary Club of small town Canada, small town USA, and that's the only Rotary that they know. How many Rotarians? They're like, I, uh, I don't, I, what, what, what's a district zone? I have no idea what a zone is. They, they don't know anything. A lot of them don't even know who the RI president is. But we're a global organization. This is their opportunity when they might not be able to fly all over the world. They can zoom all over the world. So I would highly recommend promoting that because this is a great opportunity to literally go global and get to know Rotarians all over the world. It makes a more meaningful experience. Michelle, so, Brian, um, Brian had an interesting um, comment. You, would you like to expand on that, Brian? On the um, okay. Zoom meetings? Okay, um, yeah, on a recent district uh, call, um, we, of all the clubs represented, as I said in my note there, um, all but one had seen a real increase in the amount of members actually attending and participating in meetings um, uh, over a, a, a normal, in inverted commas, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meeting where everybody gets together. So I think uh, I'm a guy who looks for positive in everything. I think we need to include Zoom or some sort of online meeting facility as a value add in in as many meetings as we can do uh, in our Port Moody uh, Rotary Club in the lo um, BC Lower Mainland. We're looking at having a simulcast as when we get back to having normal meetings, 
we're going to have uh, an, an online component as well. So that those who cannot um, practically make it to a meeting, can, who maybe have to go to work, leave early, whatever, can still enjoy the camaraderie, can still be, participate and feel like they're in, included in, and incorporated as part of our meeting structure going forward. See, that is awesome. You know, I can't tell you how many young professionals that I've talked to, and I remember this, when I first joined Rotary, I was 28 years old, and, you know, by the time I was 30, I was, had this huge high-powered position in, in a media company down in Tallahassee, and that noontime Rotary Club meeting, it was a chore to have to go, go there, and, you know, not to mention little kids and all these other things. How many more people do you think that we would be able to attract to Rotary if A, they could zoom in or simulcast, like you just said, or B, we promoted the fact that, hey, this is so cool. We want to be your local friends, but think about this. You could also have Rotary friends in, and visit them in Australia or Norway or Africa or India or wherever else. So I, I really believe that that is a selling point. It, it almost, in a later comment I made, it, it, it almost makes us pseudo passport uh, Rotary members. Right. Yeah. Totally. Um, so David Stovall, um, who is a director down in Georgia, he's just the coolest guy. Um, he was doing with his wife when they were quarantined, and she was a district governor in my class back in 2016, 2017. Anyway, so they got so bored on quarantine, they started doing these live Facebook events where they were doing these cooking classes and cooking all these Southern things. And I said, David, we should do a global like rotary Zoom meeting where the dinner party moves around the globe. So like we could do an Alaska meal one time and then we could move over and do a Canadian meal. And then we could do like a, a, a Southern USA meal and Indian meal, et cetera, et cetera. And because I'm in the media storm right now with everything that's been happening, I have not had time to put this together, but I have talked to a number of people and they really love the idea. They're like, that would be cool. Like just invite people, whoever wants to come. And this week you're going to learn, you're going to learn how to cook Alaska halibut, or you're going to learn how to do whatever, a, a, a true Mexican dish or whatever it is. Not only you'll get to meet new Rotarians um, from around the world, but you'll get to learn something. And gosh, there's so many foodies nowadays, right? Uh, at the Port Moody Rotary Club, we've actually had uh, uh, dinners. We've actually had Zoom dinners where everybody organizes their own food at home, either gets takeout or cooks at home. And then we all sit down at a designated time and we're all in front of our laptop screen or computer screen <coughs> with, a, uh, with the webcam. Everybody's knife and fork, eating on their plate, whatever, and just chatting away like we're all sitting around a dining table. We've done that a number of times. It's fabulous. <laughs> and there's another twist on that too. You can have a mystery meal. So if you're doing a, like a local Zoom dinner party, um, if a lot of your restaurants in your area are doing takeout, you could draw secret, you could draw secret names. And so like, um, I'm just gonna make this up, but uh, say like Alan would order your dinner he won't tell you what he ordered. He'll just arrange <laughs> for it to be delivered to your house, right? And then Carol would order Alan's dinner and arrange for that to be delivered to his house. And then everyone gets their dinners and like, surprise, here's what you got. I think that's fabulous. Uh, just I, a thought. That's exciting. That's really good. <laughs> hey, Michelle, um, Bill Butler was asking if there is a place where Zoom meetings for um, Rotary Clubs are listed. Um, I don't think that's the case, but have you heard anything? I've not heard anything. I know someone put out a list, uh, which, I, which I can forward that list. Uh, but I think at this point, you know, that's a, that's a, you know, I think the Young Pass District Governor's Committee, we're having a meeting, uh, oh boy, tomorrow at 5 a.m. I forgot all about that. I'm going to bring that up to Lori McCarthy and say, hey, look, why don't you guys have like on the main website, why don't you guys have a global list of Zoom meetings? Um, for, for our district, all of the, um, club meetings are listed on the district website and in our zone, they are listed on the zone website. Um, I know Rotary International is building a website, uh, 
um, connectivity. I was, um, I attended a, a meeting in Nigeria today. So um, it, that's coming and, and it is being worked on in, in a variety of capaci capacities. Um, but I'm not sure um, if there's one local repository for that yet. Maybe we can put it on a number of different things, Carol. We could put it on the Zone Facebook page, you know, Zone Facebook page. We could put it on the Zone website, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I'm going to nudge them along a little bit more because the Young Press District Governor's Group has been quite vocal about the fact that Rotary International um, in Evanston is just exceedingly slow on implementing everything. Shoot, by the time that they get done with this project, we'll be having a new pandemic. I mean, not really, I hope not, but you know what I'm saying. Um, Michelle, Walter um, had a question about communications goals. Do you wanna expand on that, Walter? Yeah, um, uh, we've been talking a lot about tools and uh, path, passage ways to get to people, but who are the people? And why do we wanna communicate with this particular or that particular group? And uh, and. And what is our purpose in communicating? You know, what do we want to gain more members? I know our club does. Do we want to increase our financial capability? That is to uh, get things done in a in a meaningful and important and 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 effective way, or do we want to uh, you know give the members more opportunity to? arrange business uh, contacts and, uh, and get, get together with themselves that way. Um, That's an know. awesome question, Walter. Okay, so what I would do is I would, if, if, if it's a club that we're talking about, and even a district, it, but let's, let's talk about from a club level. If it's a club, I would get together as the board. What is our goal for this upcoming year? Is it primarily, and let's rank these in order, one, two, and three. Is it to grow membership? Okay, so let's just pretend that that is the number one goal. So that is clearly an external audience. Okay, so right. we've, we've established that external goal. And then let's make a list, it should be short, two or three things where you can, how we're we going to achieve that in, in our town. Okay, you've gotta know your market because if I'm in a Seattle, I'm not doing radio because it's, there's too many radio stations, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do newspaper. I've, I've gotta figure out, like, for example, Ketchikan is a huge Facebook town. Everyone is on Facebook. But that's gonna be my go-to media here all the time. Twitter, not so much. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's my external audience. How are we gonna do that? And who's gonna help us do that and on a regular, consistent basis? But what you can't forget, and this is absolutely key, is who is your internal audience? All right, because you've got to market to other people and who want to become Rotarians or potentially want to become Rotarians, but you can't forget about people who are your current customers, right? People that are already living and breathing within your club. So you've got to have a message for those people as well. And so it's got to be a two-pronged effort. And I would say plan it. So, you know, think about the nature of your existing club. And that might change if your membership grows and your demographics change, well, right? I think, there, I, I think there are probably some pretty common um, objectives. One is, I mean, for our club, uh, we've, we've gone from 250 members down to 160 in the 20 years that I've been there. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there are some good and not so good reasons for that. Um, and some are controllable maybe, and some um, may not be, I mean, the, the the idea of a bunch of uh, business leaders in the community getting together and you know shaking hands and doing a few good things seems kind of dated now yeah but it's not all gone you know there's still some opportunity there i mean i recognize people in the that i would never have known about if i had not joined rotary but uh, as i as i move ahead now what makes me happy about it has changed uh, from a business development opportunity to uh, a way to make meaning for myself in the world. 
so maybe you have multiple messages, right? Because you have so. you have multiple sub audiences within the group, right? Yeah, that's I think that's right. So you need to choose a couple of different avenues, and this is absolutely you know so many clubs and even districts, quite frankly, they'll say, oh, this is the public image person. Uh, you, you know, you have you have a media background. You do this, and you'll just do it all by yourself. It shouldn't be that way. Um, really, you should put a call out there and say like. Who's interested in this? Uh, here's, a, here's a good example, just a simple example. For our Rotary Duck Race on the 4th of July, uh, we had a, a, a board meeting yesterday um, and they were like, okay, Michelle, you can be the MC." And, uh, and Catherine Tetsuda, who is a worldwide leadership speaker, just rejoined our club and she chatted with me on the Zoom meeting and she said, you know, I'd really like to do that. So we had another meeting uh, this morning and uh, I said, hey guys, people are sick of hearing from me. Catherine really wants to do this. Why don't we let the person who really wants to do this do it? So if you've got volunteers, let them participate because really you're empowering not only future leaders, but you're, you know, you're letting them do something that they're really passionate about and probably they're going to be great at it if they're passionate about it. So that's basically um, what what I wanted to share. Uh, you know, honestly, uh, I could talk about this stuff for all day long. Uh, if you would like any sort of specialized uh, training whatsoever, uh, I want to go back a slide here for a sec. Um, because I, I just want to share this last point with you. Um, because of the travel circumstances and everything that's happened, I find myself left with a chunk of change in my RPIC budget uh, for the end of this year. And I think that we can utilize that. I've checked with RI and I've talked with Alan. And what I'd like to do is offer a grant uh, to eligible clubs. And in the next week, we're gonna be putting out a, uh, uh, a form for people to fill out. There's certain considerations, but each club and or district will be invited to create a video that is shareable on social media and hopefully with a little bit of club backed paid advertising on social media uh, to say when they're meeting, to show something memorable or to show a poignant message about what the club is doing and hopefully grow membership. Uh, so with that being said, uh, one of, just so you guys know, the absolute bottom line on being able to qualify for this grant is going to be that your club's social media websites are up to date with the correct logos as well as your website. Because if we're gonna be driving traffic to those areas for people who are interested after they see these great videos, we don't want them going to something like I was referring to before where the club Facebook page hasn't been updated since 2016, right? Um, people have, they want instantaneous gratification. You don't go to Amazon and, you know, see a, I don't know, a Model T for sale claiming to be brand new. Uh, they've got the newest, latest, and greatest. So whatever club would like to participate in this, and we do have limited funds, it'll be first come, first serve based on qualifications, um, but we'll be rolling that out. So I'm really excited about that, and uh, hopefully folks will take advantage of that. Anyway, wow, 654. Is there, a, is, is there a link for that? Not yet. Not yet. Walter, I apologize. I Being part of the, the media cycle and being on the air for a couple of hours every day, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a little exhausting, not to make excuses, but. <laughs> I understand that. So um, anyway, so we'll be putting that form out and we'll make sure that um, you guys get that. Uh, I will send that Brad and Carol to you guys so that you guys have that availability. Um, I have to spend the money now. I'm going to reserve the money uh, with Alan and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to complete that video production in the next two weeks. But we, we just need to, we need to invest in, in our future and I don't wanna leave that money sitting on the table. It sounds like a fabulous um, program. I mean, not only will it get the message out, but it'll it will get 
clubs that are uh, wanting to participate engaged in in you know stretching the boundaries of their social uh, communication right and and the message can be you know um Brett and Carol, if you guys wanted to, Carol in particular, if you wanted to do something for the district and highlight, you know, various areas of the district and, and so on and so forth, that we'll, we can talk one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on that. We can do something special for that. But the idea is to drive people to the Rotary website, to the Club Finder, and say, hey, wow, that looks like a cool group. Let me check that out. Yes, that's what we've been trying to do uh, with our listing on, on sites, but I, I, I just wanted also to emphasize the idea of someone asking about goals, and I think this is very, very important for clubs to very simply put together their goals and then work from there to which audiences they want to um, uh, inform or attract and get them to be interested in what the club is doing. I, it, it's, it's, I don't think many people sit down with their goals and figure out them to the whole extent. They have goals, but they don't really feel a process of how they're going to accomplish those goals. And I think they could probably exceed the goals if they follow some of the ideas that you've given us, Michelle. Absolutely. And I've talked about this many times. And if this has been, gosh, 2014, 2015, uh, but I have shared this with a number of, like everywhere I go, I talk about this. If District 5010 in Alaska qualified for a public image grant, and then our district put in some money back then, and I we had like, I don't know, a pot of like, I don't know, somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars. I was not the public image chair, but I was on the committee, and the public image chair created a spreadsheet, and literally our committee, all of us had different talents, we tracked and you don't have to go to this extent, folks, but um, we wanted to give some return on investment, right? So we tracked the number of Facebook posts on the district page every month, uh, the number of YouTube videos that we uploaded, the number of ads that we placed, how much everything costs. And then at the end of every month, we tracked how many new Facebook followers, how many new YouTube followers, and how many new members the district got. And when we tracked, tracked it, you could very clearly see that when we had the goals and tracked the results, which by the way, we had to change mid-year because like, oh geez, we thought those movie theater ads would work, but they're not working very well. So let's pull that money and move it somewhere else. But when you when you put the put the recipe for your goals down and think about some results that you'd like to see and then track it, you're really gonna get the payoff at the end. Well, that's awesome. Last call for anyone. Um, any other burning questions? Just throw them in the chat quick. And um, if not, um, Michelle, did you have a, a final thought or was that your final thought? No, I just wanted to say thank you so very much. I love your district. Um, you, just the friendliest people in the whole wide world. And thank you once again for having me. And um, yeah, we're always here. Rosie, Mario Lane, and I are always here to answer questions all the time. Uh, no matter how silly or how complicated it is, we can help you do just about anything. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Michelle. It's, um, it's been a, a pleasure to, um, to have you speak to us and a lot of really, really good ideas that I think um, everybody that was here today can take back to their clubs, but because we're recording it and it will be available um, every club in the district should be able to um, to get some nugget out of, of what we talked about today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thanks, Michelle. Thank yes, you. Be, be safe. Take care. Thank you. Great job, Michelle. Thank you so much for um, sharing your time and talents with us tonight. Thanks, yeah. Carol. Thank Bye you now. for sharing your time. Thank you. Awesome. Bye.